Hello everyone, I'm Isaac and welcome to another figure review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Gundam Wing Proto Zero. Another model kit that I acquired from online via newtype.us. And I absolutely adore this thing's robot mode. You'll get to see why I don't like like the other mode. Yes, this thing transforms. But let's take a look at this thing and see what it looks like, shall we? Here's the front of the model. As you can see, it's very well designed here. Here's his side, his back. Whoop. Dropped him there. Tough little guy. Back looks clean. No big deal here. Overall, pretty good looking. As we've seen from looking at the model, it actually looks pretty cool. This figure is well sculpted. All the plastic is in fine detail. I did paint the head to actually make it look a little bit better. You always have to do that with these Master Grade kits. But I absolutely enjoy the look of this robot mode. It looks amazing. It's fantastic, actually. Now, this thing, like all other Master Grade and all Gundam kits like it, turns into a fully posable action figure. So let's check a look at those poses and see what they look And let's take a look at the posability here. The arm is double jointed at its elbow so it can go all the way up. The wrist does swivel as it is on the ball joint. The shoulder pad here goes up and down. You can squish the little white tab here and it will go all the way down. That's more for the transformation for later. Sometimes the thrusters do get a little stuck in there, so it's not super terrible, but hey. The head will go up so far. The head goes down so far. It is on a ball joint so it does swivel back and forth left to right there you go just try to adjust him here to see if I can get him to stand now we're going to let's see just trying to get him adjusted here all right, so we're going to turn him around and we're going to look at his backpack. The wings do go slightly up and down, in and out. You can also open up the wings and inside you'll see a thruster. You'll see a sl small little wing that you can pull out. You can also flatten the wing up against his back. Overall, pretty nifty. Now we're going to move to the legs. The legs can go up so far. They double bend. They also have a nice little armor shifting gimmick for the knee. Oh, popped off the uh, skirt there. That doesn't necessarily always happen. It is on a barbell and ball joint though, so it can move pretty far away if need be. The foot of the model after all, or I'll show you after I show you the whole bend to the back here. The foot to the model does swivel and pitch. It can also have a very steep toe bend there. It's on a ball joint, so you can go right to left, turn around, all that good stuff. Overall, a fairly poseable figure. Now, just gotta adjust him. There we go. Make sure he looks good on camera. So now that we've gotten a look at the poses, let's talk about the accessories that this thing actually has. And it has quite a number of accessories. I actually forgot to mention in the posability that you can actually open the shoulders to find weapon storage for the beam sabers. But this thing is actually very posable as a figure. And it comes with a number of really good accessories. So as we start looking at the accessories, we have green bits for the beam savers. We have his buster rifles or cannons. He comes with extra bits for his stand, his shield here. Be very careful with those yellow bits, by the way. 
little hand bits that you can swap out. And FYI, like I said, again, those yellow bits are very fragile, so be very careful. Don't move them around too much. So, with all those additional accessories, he can do a lot of really great poses. Let's do a few, shall we? And even better, it comes with its own stand. <laughs> Which makes for some great aerial poses, too. First, let's start off by making sure you pop off the fist hand so you can actually give him his trigger fingers. As to use these accessories, you do need to use different hand types. I usually store all of them in this little plastic bin here that used to belong to one of the Gundam Universe figures. So you can see it comes with a pair of these trigger hands and they attach to a slot on the inside of the rifles. As you can see, there's a little peg on the hand here and the peg goes into that slot on the rifles hand handle or goodness gracious i can't think of the name of it my brain is just deciding it wants to be a fog all right then uh basically just attached it to that and what you'll want to do is you'll want to move the thumb which is on a ball joint out of the way preferably actually it's better to move the thumb pointed down so that you can get the hand in there and then you'll swivel the thumb back around to get a secure grip. And I have the rifle, and I chose the wrong Buster Cannon. Okay, I got this backwards here. Give me a second. Let me get the right trigger hand for the other hand, and I will swap out the other rifle. Here we go. Just got to wiggle that out of the way a little bit. Alright. Look, Ma, no hands! <laughs> ah, a little joke. Alright, so we just do that and attach the correct trigger fingers to the correct Buster Rifles. If I can get... Sometimes there's a slight pain in the butt to get here done. And here we go. Follow the same procedure with both hands. Move the thumb point it down, and then slot the appropriate fingers into position, and then slide the thumb right back to where it has a good grip on the rifle. Like I said, these things are a little bit pain in the butt sometimes. I really wish they had articulated fingers with this. They did semi-articulated fingers, at least with the Gundam... RX-78-2, I wish they had done that with these. Most of these new figures that I have, I own right at the moment, have the same feature. It's a pain in the butt. But, here we go. Ah! Sometimes, like I said, it just does not want to stick. These hands are definitely a pain in the rear to get anything to stay together sometimes. Here we go. And there we are. Let's do it with the other hand here. And voila! Is Clint Eastwooding his double, his two massive cannons? There you go, his Buster cannons. You feel lucky, punk? Well, do ya? <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> Another thing of him looking good with those Buster Cannons and his shield attached to his arm. Rather nice and lovely, I must say.
And here we go. We're going to unattach the hands, and I'm going to show you how to combine the buster cannons here. So open up these tabs. Sometimes they are a pain to do, but you'll need to do that. And then you attach the rifles together with the pin side facing each other. Sometimes you'll have it come out a little wonky. Just adjust it a little bit. You should be fine. And you'll want to close up one of the gun handles. Again, reattach the particular trigger finger you want to use. So close that up. Be very gentle getting that in. And then, of course, do the same trick with the fingers, and there you go. Also, to attach the shield, there is a peg on the back of the shield. You just slot that right into his arm. And voila! He has his combined buster rifle and arm. By the way, that buster rifle is kind of heavy. Be mindful that it will droop because these things are fairly heavy. Ta da! Here's some aerial poses with him. Looking smashing, yes! As I mentioned before, this thing transforms. Unfortunately, in between some of the photos, you'll notice that uh, these kind of broke off. If you take a good look at them, the plastic on this is actually very thin. So it's not really a surprise. I would have thought that they might have used a little bit more thicker plastic with the cogs, but what can you do? I don't fault New Type or anybody for that. I just, I think it's kind of a design flaw. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by New Type. I should say that. I'd love to, but I'm a little small as a channel for that just yet. But uh, let me show you how this thing is transformed. All right, first things things first. You want to slide the shoulders completely. Now, then you'll turn the waist 180 degrees. You'll want to flatten the wings down against his back. Alright, and then you'll flatten the toes. You'll want to maneuver these little back halves up as it does instruct. So, here you go. careful these things do tend to be a little bit pain in the butt to do turn the foot all the way around and flatten the toe armor back against the heel of the, t the foot now you'll need to bend the knee all the way up against the back there we go Just trying to even it out out there. Now you'll take the shield, and you will take this little peg at the back of it that's used to attach to the arm. You will pull on it, and once you fully pull on it, you can flatten it out. Then you will open up this little flap here. Now turn the head 180 degrees all the way around until you space in his backpack. Attach the shield to the back of back through a, pe a pair of pegs on the back of the shield and overlap the gray bit onto the back of the head of the Gundam. That completes a transformation into this. Just peg in the rifles to the shield and you get this. This wonderful... <laughs>
no, I'm kidding. It's not quite that bad, but uh, yeah, it's not the greatest looking thing in the world. Behold, Kibble Hell. Not exactly trying to be a full Transformer, though. It's not trying to pretend to be a bird. It's and I already regret doing that. Yeah, the the bird, the neo bird mode on this is absolutely abysmal, to my opinion. It looks okay-ish, I suppose, but it's still not really good compared to some other transformable Gundams. And yes, there are plenty of them that do that. Personally, if I'm going to display this or keep this around, I'll probably keep him in robot mode more than anything else. And it also doesn't help that the very heavy rifles, which are basically held onto the shield bit that turns into the head, are held by this, this very small, tiny peg holds this enormously long pin-sized rifle. Me think someone needs to re-engineer that. Like, add a little peg here or something that you can, you know, have a little bit more weight. There's plenty of more length along the shield that you could do that that wouldn't compromise the look. It might actually make it look better. Overall, I actually enjoy this figure. I think it's an interesting purchase. And if you're interested in getting this Master Grade kit, I definitely recommend it. I'd give it about a 7 out of 10. It's not super terrible, but it's definitely worth the time getting. It's actually pretty nice as long as you keep it in robot mode. And the additional added stand that comes with it is great. Plus, if you're really into collecting these things, you can always pick up a third-party stand, I'm sure. But uh, I'll leave a link in the description down below to the New Type Store site for it. If you guys want to pick up this model yourself, you can go there, click on it, purchase it. For 60 bucks. I mean, it's not super terrible. It's not the worst thing I've seen. It's been fun, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below because it really does help this channel. Thank you again, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe.